In the performance horse world, people who compete at an elite level don't usually climb to the top quickly. Like most achievements in life, it takes years of dedication, a strong work ethic, and the right mindset to stick with the process and grind it out. As a former college athlete, I know this to be true, and I'd add that through it all, you have to genuinely love what you're doing. My passion for horses and my competitive nature makes me hungry for answers. So I've set out to discover the psychology behind success stories living the Western lifestyle, to expand my awareness and apply what I've learned in my own life. This journey of discovery will be uncomfortable for me, but the reward will be unmeasurable. I'm Mike Roberts, and this is The Converse Cowboy. Presented by Kerry Kelly Bits and Spurs and Schaefer Outfitter. The tour across Texas and Oklahoma for season two had an unexpected addition along the way. After the Dusty Whitford and Buster Frierson interviews, we stopped at Kerry Kelly Bits and Spurs to check out his store in Weatherford. To my surprise, Kerry Kelly himself stopped by while we were there. I was grateful to meet the guy who built most of the bits that I use today. He invited us down to his shop to show us how everything is made. It was very apparent from the moment we arrived that he has dedicated his entire life to crafting quality products. Everything is built by hand in that shop. It was very impressive to see the volume Kerry is able to produce and still maintain the highest quality. It's no surprise why his bits and spurs are some of the most sought after by folks of all disciplines in the performance horse world today. Yeah, this is, this is a clean side. We do the welding, the engraving, we have two little stations in the I say we, there's, because there's five of us in here. Mm. Well, there's two or three in here, two or three in there. So that's the dirty side. And we keep, everything stays a little cleaner uh -huh. in here, because in there, it's just grinding and constant dust and metal shavings, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So everything's kind of made over there, assembled, a little outsourcing of, uh, machine parts and things like that and then we we have mouthpieces set together and we have shanks ready to go and when we get an order like these we set them out and we'll put that those are all barrel mouthpieces we'll put the mouthpieces they want in the shanks we and shoot we have we have that many every night so we got to fix them up curious to know your process like are you over here more on the clean side or are you over there more? I try to stay over here yeah just because I don't like the black boogers <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well you stick with the same type of bit I'm assuming you're saying these are all barrel bits but are they all fairly similar same mouthpiece same yeah shape? like I got them in rows so there's, there's some combos there's some magnum ones and I, I you can see like those are all magnum ones you right stamp there. out all these yeah we try to keep mouthpieces in stock so that's what that's what we were welding up today was you know this is partially done those are just pieces of them and they're well then they're welded up like that we'll shake them it's part of the, it's another part of the process in there we'll shake them polish you know there's polish put together weld polish again crap like that. so how long have you been doing this now since 93 <laughs> That's a long time, and I asked that question specifically because I want to know how long did it take you to dial this in, like to the system that yeah, you have Yeah, I haven't now. got it dialed in yet. <laughs> Still working on it, right? Yeah. I got you. Yeah, and I think it's always like that. You know, yeah. whatever you do, you always fine tune it. But yeah, it 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 moves a little easier than it used to. You know, just because you learn from experience, and, yeah, yeah, and you. Uh, you, you you learn to use ingenuity you know you you better make that your friend and to get things done I do it a little different there's bit and spur makers all over Texas mm -hmm. you know but I kind of do it my way and there and you can say it's mass produced it's really not it's still we're still busting our hands every day and there might be four or five of us doing it but it's not just me but that's the way I do it you know yeah. Well, that's the, really the only way to keep up with the demand, right? I mean, yeah. with what you have and, and the and name you've built. Right. With mm -hmm. with the demand, you know, the more you do, the more you got to do because you're out there. You're people, More and more people want it, so that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. You want to walk over there? Yeah, we can. So I have different pieces of equipment, like uh, one, of, uh, one of our main pieces of equipment is this. This, is, this bends rings. 
those are all mandrels all mandrels that bend various rings so we we make hundreds I, I say hundreds we might make millions of rings that you see how many are on that mouthpiece there's yeah. four then there's four on every shank you know and there's just rings upon rings so that isn't a piece of equipment you can just go out and buy so how does that work does it pour it out and you just you yeah so them? so those mandrels they're all coiled up like that that's uh -huh. what they'll look and then we cut them all into pieces like that of course all those rings you see there this is this is after they've been cut you know yep. and that makes every ring you see there you know uh, whether they're little big even mouthpieces we'll use the mullen the the big ones we actually instead of bending every one of them by hand it's all it's cut off of a coil man uh, like like that rope would be and we just cut it into pieces yeah and make the mouthpieces that way well like the new one you just got i'm, I'm just curious like how do you sit down and say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna design a new bit like, mm -hmm. this is what i want to so yeah like that one i have a man a correction is my best selling bit the the ball correction i make i probably make 10 or 15 different corrections yeah. but then like i go to ropens or i go and they say oh they say hey man you gotta make a wider so you gotta make a wider short correction you know and i do them onesie twosies like that but then you go you go hey i really need to get geared up and i'll make a jig to bend this thing and make it that way every time before i will the, the pieces on there uh -huh. so then that's the that's the port for the milkman right there i got you i got you so you're pulling you're pulling from influence from guys in that industry that are yes. doing it and yeah they're like ideas. hey I, I love that correction could you make me one a little wider can yeah. you make it a little shorter you know and then you're like I've listened to people before and I made a bit and I'm like, never sold another one, you know, like, why did I do that? You know, and I'll, I'll like, oh, this is going to be good, no. You kind of got to, you kind of got to feel it out. So you let, I let a couple of test drivers have them, you know, for a little mm -hmm. while and get some feedback and that's how. And then, you know, half of the stuff I do, I might come up with it, but then somebody will come to me like that and they'll say, hey, I really like this mouthpiece, but can you tweak it just a little bit right here and do this and then you know and then I give it back to them man that's the best thing ever you got to give so and so one of those or let so and so try that or yeah you just know. kind of bet it out mm -hmm. how many feet of wiggle line I put on a pair of spurs a bit or a buckle and I figured it up and it and this is this sounds really crazy but I've done this line right here by hand I need my glasses, I'm sorry. <laughs> By hand, like 6.3 miles of this right here. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Does that sound crazy? <laughs> and this is how fast you go. Could you imagine doing that for 6.3 miles? <laughs> Same, man. No, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, do you have, I'm wondering if you have music jamming, like, I do, you have I do. headphones I have, on, or? No, we got the radio going. Yeah. Just like they do up there. What, what kind of music do you listen to? When Texas you're... country in here. Yeah, some right ninety-five there. point. Yeah, like like some Ryan Bingham. Some yeah, oh yeah, all that. Sturgill, all of them. Yeah, I can stick this pretty much all the way into my hand that far, <laughs> and have and, and have done it. I'm sure. Yep. I've done it where I've hit an artery right there somewhere, and like it went. Like your cartoon? <laughs> I was like, uh oh. And then <laughs> you go, then you go. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah, yeah. And this is it. I mean, that that was by hand. This is pretty much, I mean, you can do this by hand, you know, mm -hmm. like the old way, or you can do it with a hammer. This is, this is pneumatic, so it's like I'm hitting it with a hammer. Of course, I'm just doing a simple wheat stem here. Do you nerd out on tools? 
different tools? What's that? Do you nerd out on different tools you, to you, use? You know, I do, and, and I'm probably behind the times. You know, like, this is a new machine, but they have different ones now, and, and different engravers. This same stuff I've been using since 1993, really. There's probably better ways. I've never been to school. I've never learned under anybody, and that's why I'm still stuck doing it the same way. Yeah, I've always I've wondered that, Carrie. I mean, there's did you have a mentor that, that showed you, or you just figured it out on your own? On the bits I did, you know, like I bought Jim Edwards out. I call this a cowboy bow tie. I bought Jim Edwards out and worked with him for a little while in 2003. And that's where most of the bit knowledge came from. You know, I say most of it. There'd be a lot of it, you know, it's just been over a period of time. It's just learning, doing it, doing it. Knowing what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Got a little, that's just a little filler. I call it a bow tie, but that's a wheat stand. That's a bow tie. And then, you know, I do. So this is where it starts. Not necessarily, we, I mean, some of it starts over there, the welding and the cutting and stuff, but th this is all the grinding. You can see all the black on the wall and stuff. Where did you start though, like back in 93? Man, I had this little bitty room and it was probably this big right here in my house, little house on Bay Kid. Yeah? It was, it was about that big. So what they've been doing to these, they've been sanding, they polished, and they hand polish everything. And th those are the orders that we saw on the floor. This is them sitting there. Of course, we, we actually weld up one side of it and then we repolish it, slide the bit guards onto the barrel racers and then finish welding it. And then they have to polish it again. Mm -hmm. So this show is all about mindset and performance and all that and overcoming challenges. I'm curious, throughout this whole thing since 93, was there ever a time when you were like, man, what the hell am I doing? Like, I, I could be doing this or I could be doing that. Did you ever think about just throwing in the towel? And You know, I never did because, I mean, even, even back when I was just a one-man show, it was like, you know, it's rewarding to build something. Not necessarily that right there, but to put the silver and customize it for you. I build you something, and I did this, and you, this is what you ordered. It's tangible, or, you can or see. Or they it go, even. they go. Hey, just do what you do on there and, and build it. It's very rewarding. So I've never had any inkling to do anything else. You know, it's it's more and more. It's like a job, you know, because we're we're just grinding it out every day and trying to fill orders. And for me. And probably like you, I don't think I could work for anyone. You know? No, no not now. So that's part of it too. That's that's half the yeah. battle. Yeah. And you know when you work when you work for yourself, you only have to work half the day. It's just which twelve hours you want. <laughs> I've never heard it. it said that way. I like the shit out of that. <laughs> I like the shit out of that. Probably one of these can cut out once we sanded them, we welded them, sanded them, you know, kind of just lightly sanded. They'll go in this rock here, that's what they've been through. And it kind of puts a finish on it, takes the scratches out, it's loud. So that's how like, many we put in there at once? We put like that whole bunch in yeah, there? Yeah, that whole once? bunch came out of there. Yeah. Huh. So that, that takes the place of like a we couple of guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's man made media. That's what it is. That's fast cut. That's ceramic, so it polishes. This is a this is a pantograph, probably about World War II era right here that I do like. Well, you can you can see this one. This is one I just did. It's at, well, I did it a while back, but it's for Rich Skelton. Hmm. You see, eight-time world champion NFR. Yeah. And so that I just trace that like that, and it makes a a little duplicate over there engraved oh, out. Cool. So on like a not, something I'm not cutting out, but it's more like a logo that has to be on something like that. I'll do it with this pantograph. You see how much I use it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not very often. Yeah, so it, it, it was very impromptu. We didn't even know you were going to be at the store today. So 
the fact that we got to meet you at the store was great and then the fact that you were able to take the time out of your day to show us around your shop and uh you know show us a, a day in the life of what carrie kelly does we're very grateful for that yeah. um if you guys get a chance check him out carrie kelly bits and spurs on instagram and uh website carriekelly.com carriekelly.com